In this series of videos, I'll be explaining what time signatures are and how they work. In this video, part one, I'll be explaining the more common types of time signatures, such as those listed here. And I'll be demonstrating how to calculate missing time signatures from a passage of music. It's really important that you understand note names and their values before looking at this video. If you're not sure of the names of notes, have a look at my video, Note Names and Their Values. Firstly, it's important to understand the meaning of a time signature. So here's a time signature which most people have seen before, 4-4. Four, four. What does it tell us? Well, the top number tells us how many beats are in a bar. In this case, there are four beats in a bar. If the top number was 12, there'd be 12 beats in a bar. If it was a three, there'd be three beats in a bar and so on. Technically, you can have any number you like at the top, as long as it's a whole number and not a fraction like two and a half. But we'll start with smaller numbers first. It's the bottom number that seems to cause most confusion. The bottom number tells us the type of beat. By this, I mean, do we count in crotchets, minims, quavers, or something else? In this example, the bottom number is four. This effectively means which note, and here are a few, can fit into a semi-breathe four times. Four times because there's a four at the bottom of the time signature. The answer is a crotchet, this one, as it has a value of one, and can fit into a semi-brief four times. So we can say that the full meaning of 4-4 four, four is four crotchet beats per bar, the four being the number of beats, the crotchet being the type of beat. Let's look at another example. As there is an eight at the bottom, you need to work out which of these notes can fit into a semi-brief eight times. Here's our semi-brief at the bottom of the screen. A minim only fits twice, a semiquaver fits 16 times, whereas a quaver, which is worth half, fits eight times into a semibrief. So we've worked out that eight represents a quaver. So the full explanation of this time signature is that there are three quaver beats in each bar, the three being the number of beats, the quaver being the type of beat. This time signature, which has a two at the bottom, well, that represents a minim, as two minims, each worth two, fit into a semi-brief, which has a value of four. So the full explanation of this time signature is three minim beats per bar. Hopefully by now you're getting the hang of what time signatures represent. So let's look at some fairly common time signatures. 4-4, four, four, this is a very common time signature. So much so, it is often abbreviated to this symbol. The C is short for common time. Now, I've already said that this time signature means that there are four crotchet beats in a bar. This is true, but it clearly doesn't mean that we can only write four crotchets in each bar. Of course not. We can write anything we wish in the bar as long as the total value of the beats is exactly four, no more and no less. So this is acceptable. So is this. The four semiquavers equal beat one. This crotchet is beat two, the two quavers equal one beat, and the final crotchet equals one beat, so there are four beats in this bar. This bar is also acceptable. The four quavers equal two, the final minim also equals two. Two plus two equals four beats we are allowed in this bar. The same is true for every other time signature. No matter what the time signature is displayed, every bar must equal the number of beats in the bar. So here's three eight. Remember this means three quaver beats in each bar. It doesn't mean you can only have three quavers in each bar. You could have six semiquavers if you wanted, or indeed almost any type of beat as long as it doesn't exceed three quavers. I mentioned a few moments ago that this symbol means 4-4. Four, four. Here's a time signature that looks very similar but means something else. Notice that there is a line through the middle as if the C has been cut in two. Well, this is often called cut common time, and it represents 2-2. Two, two. So firstly, remember, this is common time and equals 4-4. Four, four. This is cut time, or cut common time, and represents 2-2. Two, two. Now, a lot of students ask me why have 2-2 two, two when you can just have 4-4, four, four, as they both have four crotchet beats in them. My answer is simply no. Although 4-4 four, four has four crotchet beats, 2-2 two, two does not. It has two minim beats. Okay, two minims can be split into two crotchet beats each. So you may ask, why have two two at all? Well, there are quite a few reasons for this, but the most common reason is to do with the tempo or the pulse of the music. 
For example, 2-2 is quite commonly used for faster music. 4-4 is generally used for slower, not slow, but slower music in 4. Just don't worry too much about this. If you're writing a piece of music, it doesn't really matter whether you were to use 2-2 or 4-4. What's important is that you understand that 4-4 has four crotchet beats per bar and 2-2 has two minim beats per bar. This does cause a problem if you're sitting a music theory exam and asked what time signature could be for this piece of music. Without really knowing how fast the music is to be played, it's pretty impossible to know for certain. Therefore, the answer could be 4-4 four, four, or 2-2. Two, two. You'd get a mark for either. The same dilemma appears in many other time signatures, such as 3-4 or 3-8. Perhaps you want to compose a piece of music in 3, but you're not sure whether to use 3-4 or 3-8. They both have 3 beats. 3-4 is in crotchet beats, whereas 3-8 is in quaver beats. Generally, 3-8 is used for faster rhythms, but there's no real hard and fast rule, so don't worry too much about this. I will have a look a little more about this in my videos about composition. Now, before we tackle some exam-type questions, there's something very important I need to point out here. Here's a full bar of quavers in 2-4 and 3-8. Notice how in 2-4 the quavers are in groups of 2, whereas in 3-8 they are in a group of 3. I talk about the grouping of notes in my video about beaming, but as a rule of thumb for the moment, quavers in a time signature with an 8 at the bottom are grouped together in 3s. Do remember this rule. OK, if you're going to be sitting a music theory exam, you often come across questions whereby you'll be given a melody or a rhythm, and you have to write down what the time signature is. Let's try a few examples. Now, the first thing to notice is that the quavers are grouped in 2s. This immediately means we can ignore any time signature with an 8 at the bottom. If there were a 2 at the bottom of our time signature, we'd be counting in minims, as the 2 represents minim beats. Now, if we add all the note values together, half plus half plus 1 equals 2. 1 minim equals 2. Therefore, as there is 1 minim in this bar, the top number in our time signature would be 1 making the full time signature 1, 2. This is a very rare time signature, and if I think about it, I don't think I've actually ever played a piece of music in 1, 2. So let's try again. Let's try counting in crotchets. So a 4 at the bottom. The two quavers, each worth half, equal 1 crotchet. And there's another crotchet here, so there are two crotchets in this bar. As there are two, we add a 2 to the top of our time signature, so 2-4, which is a much more common time signature, is the answer. How about this one? There's no quavers in this one, so we can't dismiss time signatures with an 8 at the bottom just yet. So let's look at the options. If there was an 8 at the bottom, meaning quaver beats, we have to count up all of the quavers in the bar. So in this minim, there are four quavers. Remember that each quaver equals half. The second minim, therefore, has another four quavers. This crotchet is made up of two quavers, as is this one. And here's another minim, so another four quavers. If we count up all of the quavers, there is a total of 16. So our time signature could be 16, 8. I'll pop this at the bottom of the screen as a possible answer for the moment. OK, so how about if we count in crotchets? A four at the bottom of the time signature. Two crotchets here, two here, one, one, and another two. We count up all the crotchets. There are eight of them. So the time signature could be 8-4. I'll pop this at the bottom of the screen as well. Finally, how about counting in minims? A two at the bottom of the time signature. One minim here, one minim here. These two crotchets equal one minim and one final minim. So four minims in total. This could be 4-2. So which of these options to choose? Well, the answer is 4-2. Now, there are lots of reasons for this, some of which are quite complex, and I'll discuss this further in part three. But the main feel or pulse of the beat is clearly in two due to the abundance of minims. It's also easier to count to four rather than to have to count to eight, as in eight four in every bar. Besides, why write eight four when, like fractions, it's easier to express as four two? As for 16-8, well, this is actually another very rare time signature. If you're studying music theory with the associated board, you'll never get asked a question about 16-8. It's what's called an irregular time signature. 
and I'll be looking at irregular time signatures in part four of this series of videos. In a nutshell, irregular time signatures are when the beat cannot be split equally into twos or threes. Remember I said that when the time signature has an eight at the bottom, the quavers are grouped into threes. Well, you can't group 16 quavers into equal groups of threes. There'd have to be two groups of two. This makes it an irregular time signature. 4-2, however, is a very common time signature and emphasizes the minim beats. Quite a tricky question, this one. In this example, there are two bars and the second bar has a rest in it. Always make sure that you count any rests in a bar when calculating a time signature. Rests are just as important as the notes themselves. To calculate the time signature, let's start with counting in crotchets, a four at the bottom of the time signature. Well, this wouldn't work as we'd end up with one and a half in each bar. Remember, you can only have whole numbers at the top of a time signature. It can't be a minim beat, as there isn't even one minim in each bar. But we can count in quavers, an eight at the bottom of our time signature. Two quavers in a crotchet and one here. So there are three quavers in this bar. Let's just check the second bar as well. There are three quavers. Don't forget to include that quaver rest. We've already put the eight at the bottom of the time signature to represent the quaver beats. We've calculated that there are three quaver beats per bar, so we can add in the three as the top number to our time signature. So the answer is three eight. One final example. No quavers in this question, but if we did count them, there are eight, so it could be eight eight. If we counted crotchets, there are four, so the answer could be four four. And if we counted in minims, there are two, so the answer could be two two. The answer is not eight eight, as why have eight eight when you can have four four? A simpler way to express eight quavers in a bar. Remember, with an eight at the bottom, we're looking to group our quavers in groups of threes. Now, in 8-8, eight, eight, it's not possible to group all of your quavers equally into groups of threes that have to be groups of twos. So it makes it an irregular time signature. So is it 2-2 two, two or 4-4? Four, four? Well, it could be either. You'd get a mark if you put 4-4 four, four or 2-2. Two, two. In fact, you'd also get a mark if you chose to use the symbols for common time or cut common time. There is simply no way we can tell whether the composer wrote this in 4-4 four, four or 2-2. Two, two. So just be aware that sometimes, and only sometimes, there may be a choice of answers. Now I could keep providing examples like those we've just tackled, but as there is an unlimited amount of possibilities, I will leave it there. The key thing to do is to count and explore each time signature option. In time you'll get quick at this, and you'll be able to spot missing time signatures very quickly. In the next video, I'll be explaining the difference between simple and compound time signatures. In the meantime, thanks for watching.